Today's episode brought to you by Mazo Media. If I have a camera on my phone, why would I want to lug around this big thing? Today, we're going to talk about differences between point shoot cameras, medium cameras, and DSLRs. Hello and welcome to another episode of Future Camera Guy. I'm your host, Matthias Clement. So today we're going to talk a little bit about cameras and the differences between them. I'm going to not lie. I love my iPhone. I love the camera on there. So much so that I have 2,000 photos on my phone. Ansel Adams once said, the best camera you have is the one you have on you. And that couldn't be closer to the truth than any other photography statement. I love this camera, it works well. Granted, I have to move in and out, but in a pinch, it's the camera I like to use. But once you start using your camera phone in low light, you start to learn how fast the limitations come on. There's really three kind of cameras that I'm gonna talk about today. There's your point and shoot cameras, there's your mirrorless cameras, and then there's your DSLRs. Point and shoot cameras have a lot of advantages. They're small, they're compact, they easily fit in your pocket, and nowadays you can get a pretty good zoom out of them, and again, they're small, and it's great. But a few of the cons are, the fact that it's a smaller camera means that you can't get as good of an f-stop in there, meaning you can't get a lot of light in. And another problem that faces point and shoot cameras is the fact that they have a smaller sensor compared to their big brothers, meaning not as much light can strike it. Meaning when you're in darker situations, birthdays, office spaces, uh, wherever you might find yourself, you can't get as much light in. And so your ISO bumps up and it means that you get kind of a grain in your photo. Or in auto mode, it's even worse because the camera needs to compensate for all that. So it lowers your shutter speed to 1 30th of a second, meaning you need to be a statue. And often when we're looking for something that's quick and easy to use, we're looking to capture moments that are there and gone. They don't really last too long. Whether it's grandchildren running along, your friend doing something silly, you're wanting to capture something quickly. So when you're looking at point shoot cameras, the basic cheat models don't even have a manual function anymore. And you want to look at a more mid-grade to high-end point and shoot so that you can have a manual function that can capture quick moving items or shoot in low light situations such as a really nice New York landscape at night. These are some of the things that you want to think about when having a point and shoot camera. This, my friend, is a DSLR. We've all seen them, our uncle has them, our artsy friends have them, but a lot of people don't understand what the advantages are of a DSLR to a compact point and shoot. First and foremost, the image quality is fantastic, but there's a few reasons why that image quality is amazing. First of all, the lenses. The lenses are constructed in a much better manner and a much larger manner than what you would find in a compact point and shoot. The fact that you can change the lenses also gives you a huge advantage. It's all right to walk around with this point and shoot with a low F stop and it works. But in case you're wanting to do something artistic or looking for something more low light, you're able to just go ahead, take the lens off, swap it off, put your other one on and have something that has an F 1.8 with a really low light capability and that nice creamy background that's out of focus, bringing a attention to what you're trying to shoot. But also, the sensor inside of here is roughly six times larger than what you're going to find in a point-and-shoot camera. The larger the sensor, the more light that can strike it, the better the light sensitivity that you can get out of the image. It also allows for a higher megapixel count, which can be useful for cropping or making large pictures. The other thing I personally really like about DSLRs is that they're tough. I'm really rough on my equipment. If you drop a point-and-shoot camera, we just know that it's probably not going to survive that tumble. But a DSLR camera, many of them are built with magnesium alloy bodies or frames, sorry, uh, inside of here that are super, super strong. Sure, your plastic may crack a bit on the outside, but uh, the inside is like a tank and it can be really, really strong. I remember one time I was holding my camera like this and I tripped and I actually fell onto the camera. And all I got was a little chip on the side of my camera. It worked great. 
there's no way a digital point and shoot would have survived that tumble. So not only is it durable, not only does it take better photos, it has flexibility in the lenses, and if you ever expand your opportunities, you can also add a flash on top to be able to shoot more stuff. Uh, you can also add wireless slave triggers to it so that you can shoot inside of a studio. There's a lot of opportunities that you have with the DSLR in order to expand it and make it work more functionally. The other thing that's nice is that with a DSLR, you can invest in your lenses and when you feel the need to upgrade, you don't have to throw away everything. You're actually just gonna get rid of the body and buy a new body and upgrade there. Canon has its own lens mounts. Nikon has its own lens mounts. And that's something you wanna keep in mind when you buy a camera. Will I be investing a lot of money into lenses that I may wanna switch later down the road? This is often why it's a good idea with DSLRs to buy a cheap body and get really good lenses because when you upgrade later on, you know that the lenses will retain their value while the DSLR body will change from time to time. We have compact cameras and we have DSLR cameras. And there's kind of a gray area in between of the new generation of cameras. They go by a few different names. They can be subcompact cameras, they can be mirrorless cameras, or cameras with interchangeable lenses. Some of these examples might be Canon's SX50 or SX500. You have Sony's NEX line and you have Olympus's Pen. There's a few different in-betweens and they've really come a long way in the last few years and I'm really impressed with them. The great benefit is they have DSLR quality with all the features of a subcompact camera. What I mean by that is some don't have interchangeable lenses. They're still fixed, such as Canon's SX50. But the benefit is that you get a 50 times zoom in a small camera. You look at Canon's SX500, it's an even smaller camera, and you get a 30 times zoom. In order for me to invest in the lenses required to do that, I would have to spend thousands of dollars on my DSLR, but I can only spend 200 something dollars on a Canon SX500 and be able to get this huge amount of range in there. So you get this benefit of a huge range, but even better is the fact that some of these sub subcompact cameras have interchangeable lenses and a really, really big sensor on the inside. Some camera companies are even going as far as taking a DSLR camera sensor and putting it inside of these mirrorless cameras. And what this means is that you get DSLR quality with interchangeable lenses, but it doesn't weigh 20 pounds on your arm. It's a fantastic opportunity for you to have great images that are really, really fast to snap without having to lug it around. There's a lot of different cameras in this range and I can't get too specific. As I've mentioned a few times, I'm a big fan of the Canon lines, the SX50 and the SX500. But if you look at Nikon's new offerings in the J series or the S series, they have 135 autofocus points that make autofocus way faster than any DSLR could ever hope to be and really snappy, really clear and interchangeable lenses for that benefit. And then you look at something like the Sony NX, NEX line, and it has amazing opportunities, interchangeable lenses, a digital SLR sensor size inside of a small camera, and you get all the benefits of the speed with also the clarity of the lenses. So it's up to you to find what works for your lifestyle, whether it's a compact camera, a subcompact mirrorless interchangeable lens camera or a DSLR. It really comes down to capturing memories and quite often those memories happen really fast. And so I really advise always looking for a mid-grade camera that you know will perform to the needs that you need. Whether you have grandchildren running around, you're a sports fanatic, you need a waterproof camera because of your active lifestyle, or you're really looking at photography as a serious hobby or even a profession. These are the things that you need to let the sales rep know so that you're able to get the best possible camera that you could look for. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Just a friendly reminder that I work on commissions, so if you go to buy something in the store and let them know that Matt helped you, 
That'd be greatly appreciated. Helps me uh, earn a few dollars and continue making these videos to help you learn about technology and how to make the best out of it. Please check out more of my videos down below and also you can subscribe to learn when new videos come out. Thanks.